Hello, it's Lord Slaw here, coming back with another video, and the topic of today's is the top 5 pure historical stories. So the pure historicals are those episodes set in history, but don't have any aliens or people from a different planet or people from a different time other than the TARDIS crew. And this is a type of story I was not a huge fan of as a kid. I mean, I like the Aztecs, but... As for the rest of them, I don't know, I just found them pretty boring. But then, I found most of the Hot Era pretty boring when I was little, but in the past few years, I've started to really enjoy it, to the point where now it's my second favourite era, and hence, the pure historicals have went up in my estimations by a ton. And, you know, there's quite a few of them I absolutely love now. But, uh, yeah, so, without further ado, let's get into it. So at number 5 we have the Romans. So this is a lot different than usual pure historicals, as, as they usually played pretty serious, um, often with some pretty dark themes for the time, but the Romans is almost purely for laughs. Dennis Spooner, I, I absolutely love you. You are a very, very funny man. And the Romans is an absolute testament to this. I mean, Euro is just hilarious. Um... <laughs> Just like that moment when, uh, you know, the doctor says, oh, that wine's poisoned. I'm pretty sure it was wine. I haven't seen it in a while. And then he's just like, oh, uh, and taste this servant. The servant just drops in. He's like, oh, he was right. <laughs> he just really doesn't give a toss. And, you know, while <laughs> you could very easily play this, you know, to be serious, I think it's good that for once they didn't, considering most of the pure historicals are fairly serious episodes. And it's very funny. And I've got to give an episode credit when it can make me laugh. So yeah, that's why that comes in at number five. So at number four, we have the gunfighters. This is another pure historical story, which isn't actually played very seriously. And again, it, it is very, very funny. Donald Cotton is on form with just a really fun little Wild Western setting. I mean, come on, it's pretty much obligatory that every TV series which runs long enough needs to have one of these episodes. Doctor Who's had two. This one's really good, and uh, the Series 7 one's a bit crap, but let's just forget New Who Series 7 ever happened, eh? Uh, but yeah, the, I, I particularly like the jokes where um, the person went up to the Doctor and said, Are you Doc Holiday? And he's like, mm, Oh yes, I suppose I am on holiday. <laughs> it's just moments like that make the episode really enjoyable. Uh, and I think the best part of the episode is the fact that you can now say definitively that Stephen got lynched. I mean, why wouldn't you want to say that? As much as I love Stephen, just saying Stephen got lynched, it's, it's just it just sounds ridiculous. But it, it happened in Doctor Who in the 60s. And this episode, lots of fun. Love the Battle of the Last Chance Saloon. Love the plot. I love all the characters, uh, especially Doc Holliday. He's pretty funny. And yeah, that's why it comes in at number four. So at number three, we have the Aztecs. Uh, so people are either going to be cheering because I haven't put it at number one, or people are going to be like, oh, how standard of you, the Aztecs is overrated, blah, 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 blah. But I think it's worthy of its reputation, even if it isn't my favourite pure historical, and I'd certainly place the two that are above it, you know, pretty highly above it. But still, this is a very important story to the uh, Doctor Who, because for the first time it brings up that whole debate of can you change time? And this is an absolutely brilliant story for Barbara. We, we get quite a few stories focusing on Ian, but we don't get a whole lot focusing on Barbara. I mean, the one next on my list we do as well, but uh, yeah, uh, and her character is really good and... Unfortunately, uh, unlike Ian, where we get to explore, you know, his character more in the Companion Chronicles, um, obviously, you know, Jacqueline Hill wasn't alive to do Big Finish, so we haven't really got too much of that. So we've got to take what precious little we can get here, and it's brilliantly written by John Lucarotti, and there's not too much to fault here. I mean, I know some people find it boring, but fuck them. So at number two, we have The Crusade. Wow, how opinions change. I used to absolutely hate this episode when I was a little kid. I mean, seriously, it was one of my least favourites ever. I, I don't remember why I didn't like it. I probably just found it really boring. However, these days, when, I, when I've rewatched it recently, oh, it is really, really fucking good. I mean, mainly because I've actually seen the whole thing this time rather than just the two surviving episodes. But... Just even the two surviving episodes I found to be of immense higher quality than I thought they were. Yeah, The Crusade is fantastic. It's got pretty much three plots going on. Um, Barbara's plot where she's, you know, trying to survive uh, against Ella Kier and all that. And that's some really dark stuff for the 60s. And Barbara gets a really, really good outing in this story. Especially when, you know, I've forgotten his name. But the person who shelters her because he hates Ella Kier, um... 
it gives her a knife and says, if the guards uh, nearly f- like come to find you, you have to kill yourself. And she's like, life is better than this. And it's, it's just moments like that, which it's just Barbara's character, and it's perfect. The Doctor and Vicky in court uh, with Richard the Lionheart is also very fun to watch. As Hartnell and Maureen O'Brien's chemistry is absolutely fantastic to watch in every episode they're in. They work a, a lot better together than him and Carol and Ford, as controversial as some people might find that. Ian's quest as the knight is probably the weakest part of the story, but it's still all right, and um, Abrahim is pretty funny to watch, uh, which I suppose maybe a bit of tonal whiplash, considering how dark some parts of the episode are and how light-hearted the other half is, but still, it's a very well-written, very enjoyable episode, and just what I expect of something written by somebody as good as David Wicker. So for some honourable mentions now, uh, the first one is The Reign of Terry. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this episode, at least I did on my last watch. I haven't watched it in a while, and since I have, I've actually studied the French Revolution. So I'm probably going to end up kicking myself that I haven't put it on here, uh, because, you know, I can appreciate it a lot more now that I've, you know, actually studied the period. But still, it was a really enjoyable episode, definitely well worth you getting a spot on the honourable mentions, because it could have very nearly got on the list. Uh, the next one is the Myth Makers. Um, again, this is something I'm about to study at um, college, uh, well, sick form college, whatever. Uh, the Battle of Troy, uh, well, at least the stories surrounding it, like the Iliad and uh, the Aeneid, etc. But yeah, um, this one's a really fun story. A little weak as an exit for Vicky, but not as bad as the War Machine, so I'll let it slide, because uh, Dodo's exit and that is... Almost, it's basically just funny of how shit it is. Uh, yeah. Oh, and another one is The Highlanders, which I just watched for the first time the other day. Wow, it's a bit of an underrated episode, and it's fucking hilarious. I mean, not all of it. Some of it's actually pretty dark, but uh, the parts where Patrick Troughton's pretending to be the German doctor is just fantastic. A real testament to how funny Patrick Troughton can be when he wants to be. Uh, that's brilliant. I've also got a dishonorable mention uh, this week for you, and that is The Smugglers. Mainly because nobody talks about The Smugglers, and I thought, you know... It's my job to talk about the smugglers because nobody else talks about it. And basically, I'm just going to say a chip, boring, never watch it. Well, do watch it once so you can say you've watched every episode, but never watch it again after that. You got it? Right, let's move on to number one. So at number one, we have Marco Polo. So any of you who know me probably could have saw this coming, as I don't make my love of this episode a secret particularly. But yeah, it's a fantastic story. Sure, it doesn't have too much plot altogether, But that's not the point of the episode. The point of it is to have some fantastic character interactions and also to be a history lesson on ancient Chinese culture and politics and, you know, just what generally went on. There's so much, like, you know, that you can learn about ancient China just from watching this episode. And it's not heavy-handed as well. You just kind of realise at the end, oh, I actually know quite a lot about um, ancient China now, don't I? Shit. (laughs) And then the other side is the excellently written characters i mean john lucarotti is just a fantastic writer when it comes to doing characters and this is no exception you really really want the tardis group to get on with the chinese lass who yes i forgot the name again don't kill me and marco polo but it just tagana keeps on finding ways to wedge distrust between them through like you know things which go on when they go across the track and all that but yeah, it's, you really hate Tagane. You really love to hate Tagane. And that's more or less the Marco Polo, in a nutshell, hate Tagane. Um, but obviously there's a lot more to it than that. And I highly recommend you watch it. It's, it's sad. It's the first episode which is missing. And it's a, it's a real shame to have it lost. Because there's a lot of care and attention that's clearly been put into the sets and the costumes to make it accurate to, you know, ancient China. Um, but we don't get too much of that anymore. Oh well, that's it for today's video, and I'll see you back next time in another video.